Hey everyone, welcome back to another matchups video. In this one, we're going to be going over soul laners versus supports. And so, as I have it laid out, just like in the other ones, let's use King Arthur for example. We'll have King Arthur counters. So these are characters that I think he's going to counter. We'll have neutral matchups. So these are matchups that are more so just like kind of neutrally balance each other out. Uh, the kits from King Arthur versus the kits to some of these other characters like Kuzumbo, for example. Uh, are, are going to be about neutral. They're not going to be too swayed into one direction. And then lastly, we have counters King Arthur. And these are going to be characters that heavily counter King Arthur by locking him down, essentially. Um, super heavy lockdowns could be very, very hard for King Arthur to play a game. And so this is the layout that we're going to have for this video. And we're going to be going over each soul laner in their respective support matchups. And just like all my other ones, it's very important to note, categorization doesn't really matter, or it doesn't matter as much. What matters is... Um, how you think about it, how you think about the matchup. The point of this video is to help you understand why a matchup is this way. Uh, in general, of course, I don't want to like hard go over every single character, but why in general matchup is this way and using that knowledge, uh, you can then create your own sort of categories and you can maybe agree with me on some of these or disagree with me on some of these and that's completely fine. But what matters is that you understand the logic behind the matchups when you're looking to draft and smite so you can better you know, draft and look for counter picks and all that kind of jazz. So uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and get into this video. First up, we're gonna have King Arthur, of course. And so we'll just kind of go off with King Arthur's counters. Uh, well, with characters that King Arthur, I think, counters. So out of all the supports, I think King Arthur counters Baron the most. And the reason why I say this isn't because he like just hard shits on Baron. It's because Baron physically has like no peel versus King Arthur. If you ever try to play Baron support into a King Arthur, if you root him, he's just gonna spin away from the root. Um, spin through it if you try to ult him he's just going to spin through your ult because king arthur has like three dashes and so baron like really can't do anything to king arthur to peel against him and i think that's a very very important uh thing to understand and learn here and that's why i think king arthur counters baron again not because king arthur is locking baron down by any means but just because baron has no real way of locking king arthur down so it's kind of like the inverse so for the sake of time uh, in this video, I'm not going to be going over all the neutral matchups just because I don't want the video to be absurdly long. So we'll just pretty much be going over these two sections like King Arthur counters and who counters King Arthur. But I might go over like one or two characters here and there in the neutral matchups if I think it's like really worth talking about. So one I do want to go over actually is Sobek. Um, Sobek actually his pluck is really good into King Arthur. I don't really see him as a counter because I don't see him hard locking down King Arthur. But I do think he's notable in that aspect that you can pluck King Arthur out of position. And it takes like a little bit of time for King Arthur to recover because he doesn't really have instantaneous dashes or more channel over time dashes. So I would kind of like keep that in mind. So now going down over to counters King Arthur, Ares Ardeo. Their cripples absolutely obliterate King Arthur. King Arthur relies off dashes. And when they get crippled out, again, by Ares and Ardeo, these are two of the best cripple characters in the game. Um, he really just can't play the game. It's very, very hard for him to play the game. He does have some sort of counterplay here and there. If if you're against a really good King Arthur player, they'll like use their ult the second, say, you chain or use Ardeo Cripple, just to sort of waste the enemy's cripple time. Uh, but for the most part, these two characters are going to hard counter him. Similar to them, Ganesh, right? Ganesh is just your ultimate backline support. Pretty much, uh, he's going to be able to silence and throw the King Arthur and just really prevent him from channeling abilities and playing the game. That's what Ganesh specializes in. Kumba is very similar to Ardeo and Ares, but the difference is Kumba's root doesn't last as long, or his cripple root doesn't last as long, but he does have a Mez, and he also has some other like heavy lag down. So again, he's going to be able to can cancel out a lot of King Arthur's CC abilities. Kumba's very similar to Ares and Ardeo. The major difference is Kumba's root doesn't last nearly as long, or his cripple root doesn't last nearly as long as... Ardeo's and Ares cripples will uh, but he does have a mez and of course he has an alt so he has a lot of other CC as well besides his two which he's gonna use to be able to cancel out a lot of King Arthur's channeled abilities. Ymir and Kabraken are also really good into him because not only are you stunning you know King Arthur while he's trying to use abilities but your walls are really really impactful. King Arthur has no way to get around Ymir or Kabraken wall so if you hit him with a stun or a slow in Ymir's case that kind of stuff uh, you can easily just wall a section of a fight and King Arthur can't really get out of that and he's kind of trapped and stuck. So these two are actually going to be really, really good into King Arthur because they're going to make sure he kind of stays in the area for a much longer period of time than he wants to and pretty much just trap him in so you and your team can kill him. And then finally, we have Fafnir. Fafnir just has a lot of stuns in this kit. And so you're going to be able to hammer King Arthur, Dragon Transform, then you're going to have two more stuns. And it's kind of similar in the case to like, say, Ymir Kabraken, except without the wall, and maybe even like Kumba Karna. You just have like a lot of CC to be able to cancel Arthur's channeled abilities. So these, these are going to be the main uh, seven characters that I think are going to counter King Arthur. 
Um, one thing I do want to note is that Ares, Ardeo, Ganesh, and Kumba, these four characters are going to be used to, like, in this video to counter a majority, I would say, of the soul laners, just because they're super, super good at locking down soul laners and peeling for the back line. These characters' kits are literally designed to sort of peel or lock down enemy characters, especially those that have dashes. So a majority of this video, these four, you're going to be seeing quite a bit when it comes to the counters category. All right, so next up we have Tyr. He's very, very similar to King Arthur in the sense that he gets heavily locked down by crippled characters. So again, these are the same four that we mentioned just earlier. Um, the big difference is that Tyr has a lot of displacement in his kit, right? Like that's what his kit mainly is. So Sylvanas, Yemoja, Baron, and Kabrakin all heavily get screwed over by displacement, which is why I put them under characters that Tyr actually counters, in my opinion, because whenever these characters get displaced, they have a much longer recovery time. Uh, when they get displaced because they don't have immediate dashes, right? Like Baron, Kabrak, and Sylvanas, these guys don't have any dashes at all. Yamocha does have an escape, but she has to kind of walk to that escape, right? It's not like immediate. You can't cast it immediately. And so whenever Tyr, say, gets a blink off and then displaces Baron into his team, Baron, especially late game, is pretty much as good as dead, right? Or like some of these other characters, especially Kabrakin. Kabrakin has to really walk up close to use his abilities, and displacement characters are really, really good into him because they can kind of punish him for doing that. Whereas some of these other characters do have a little bit longer range, but for the most part, when they get displaced, uh, it's just really, really hard for them to recover. So that's why I consider Tyr to sort of counter these four. Uh, in terms of counters Tyr, again, very similar to King Arthur, you're relying off dashes for a majority of your kit, for a majority of your damage. So, of course, Ares, Ardeo, gonna be able to cripple out the dashes. Same thing with Kumba Karna. That's kind of why he's here. Also, Kumba's in a really good spot right now. He just got, like, Omega buffed. So, he's gonna be pretty much, like, way more viable than he used to be, which is why I'm kind of putting him down here a lot more instead of in the neutrals matchup. And then, of course, we have Ganesh, who pretty much does the same thing, right? He cancels out Tears' abilities. Uh, and locks them down heavily so it's really hard for him to play the game and of course here's our neutral category these are characters that have some decent influence into tier but nothing too too crazy uh the reason why fafnir is actually not under counters anymore and he's a neutral same thing with ymir is because tier has a passive that prevents him from being stunned or hard cc'd for like stuns mezzes and all that kind of stuff for over one second and if you build ccr it's actually even less than that too and so, like, Fafnir's hammers and stuns are going to be way, way less effective, especially with DR, than they would be on, say, someone like King Arthur. It's kind of the same thing with Ymir. Um, Ymir has a bit more play into him because Ymir also has slows, but if you're tier, you just kind of grab a wing blade if you're into a Ymir, um, and it's a lot better and a lot easier to kind of do what you want to do. So that's why these characters are sort of in neutral. They still have some sort of effect, some sort of interruption to tier, but it's not going to be nearly as bad as, say, King Arthur, for example. All right, so next up, we're going to have Achilles. So Achilles... Pretty much just sort of like a normal character. He doesn't specialize in anything except for one of the best things in the game, and that's executing enemies. Uh, so Achilles does get obviously a reset execute if he kills somebody. If they're like at or below 35% HP, he can get an execute off and instantly kill them. And so that's where he's going to sort of shine. So because of that, I think you guys know where, of course, I'm going with this, but Achilles is going to counter... Kepri. One of Kepri's big things is ult. It's going to be really hard to play into Achilles relative to other characters because Achilles is going to be able to execute allies that you're trying to save. So Kepri, of course, is going to get countered by Achilles or Achilles is going to counter Kepri, whichever way you want to look at it. And Kabrakin and Sylvanas. Now, why do I have Kabrakin and Sylvanas on here? Because these two characters don't have immediate escapes. Okay. And because of that, they're really easy to execute. It's not like Achilles is about to ult. I can leap over it, right? Or I can just sort of dash away. No. Like, I actually really like playing Achilles into Kabrakin. Um, if I'm ever like playing this matchup or I hate playing Kabrakin into Achilles because it's like, oh, well, I, I'm just dead. If he's next to me and I have like that threshold of his HP, I just die, right? Uh, same thing with Sylvanas. Can't get away from the executes. Now, in terms of characters that counter Achilles, uh, Ganesh, right? Because Ganesh is just going to counter every single solo laner because he's insane. <laughs> Kumba Karna because he can root cripple Achilles and just kind of prevent him from playing the game. Achilles hates getting his dash canceled or prevented. And because of that, of course, Ares and Ardeo or yeah, Ares and Ardeo are going to be really, really good into him because if he can't three around or be mobile, it's really going to screw up his game, especially because he has auto attack cancels that he loves to do in between his dashes. So like not only are you canceling the dashes, but you're canceling auto attack cancels. And that's going to be a lot of Achilles' damage and mobility just locked down because he can't use his three. So these, these three characters because they have cripples in their kits, are going to be very, very good into them, especially Ares and Ardeo. And then finally, Fafnir, just because Fafnir has a lot of stuns, um, you can kind of argue and say like, oh, well, maybe Fafnir doesn't lock down as much, and maybe he could be on a neutral, so he's still going to be really good. But I, I think he does counter Achilles pretty well, 
because of his stuns and all his CC. So, uh, and also too, because of his disarm, right? Again, we just talked about auto canceling and that's what he wants to do. And so Fafnir's disarm actually really works out against Achilles because even though he's not quite auto attack based, um, if you disarm him, it kind of screws up a lot of his damage and his flow, right? And also too, like attack speed or attack speed reduction is actually feels really good into Achilles actually. It feels really bad to play Achilles and have your attack speed sort of reduced by a large portion because it kind of makes it a little bit more difficult to get in that extra damage. So these are gonna be the five main characters that counter Achilles. Now in terms, in terms of neutral matchups, you have someone like Ymir here. I would put Ymir under a character that Achilles counters, but the reason I don't is because of his wall. Ymir can actually have some pretty good play into Achilles with his wall. Uh, you can do some pretty neat things with it and, and pretty much block off Achilles' execute. So that's why I don't have him up there and the emoji can obviously hoop away and all that kind of stuff. Baron, I think you could actually make a pretty good argument for like being being able to get countered by Achilles. Um, so you could actually make a good argument saying like, oh, well, I think Baron should be up here and that's completely fine. Um, I just think that Baron, he's got a little speed boost to get away, some slow immunity and all that kind of stuff. And he, he does have like range CC, which is nice. But yeah, for the most part, like you could definitely make an argument saying like, hey, I think Baron gets countered by Achilles. That's completely fine. But yeah, these would be my sort of like matchups where I would put these in respect to Achilles. One thing I also wanted to mention too in this video is that uh, in the other ones, we treated characters like Bake, Kujira, uh, Cerberus as supports. In this one, they'll be treated as soul laners. So they won't be under the support section. They'll be more soul laners. And honestly, they I think they kind of fit solo a little bit more. I mean, Serb fits everywhere more, but Bake in particular fits solo lane a little bit more. So um, I think this is pretty appropriate. But Bake, um, you guys know my stuff on him. My I, I don't like this character that much. I think it's kind of boring to play, but all biases aside, I think he's really not the best. He did get some buffs, so he is a bit better than he used to be, but I just don't think he's that good. Uh, so he's not going to counter anybody. Um, when it comes to counters, though, all these characters are going to kind of counter him. Cripple characters are going to shit on him just because he has dashes that he relies on. He doesn't have a CC immune alt, so that's where Ares comes from, um, as well as, you know, the cripples. Uh, Kabrak and Ymir because they have walls um, and great CC. Sobek, if you pluck Bakke out of the position, even though Bakke has a dash, uh, his dash is very, very short compared to other dashes in the game and takes a little bit to wind up. So he's still like in a really bad spot and still hard for him to recover. Uh, Ganesh, just because Ganesh counters like pretty much every dive character in the game almost. Um, Yemoja, because Yemoja has big walls too and her hoops are really good at catching Bakke Kujira dash. Um, that's the main reason why Yemoja is here is because her hoops are just really good at if Bake is dashing straight backwards, you can just kind of hoop him right back and it's super easy to catch him. Baron, because even though Bake can dash out of Baron's root and ult, it's a short dash, so Baron can still kind of suck him in with his ult. Uh, so I think he's still going to be good into him. Atlas, because Atlas has a displacement ability kind of like Sobek, right? Not going to be as good as the pluck, but he's going to be able to pick up Bake Kujira and throw him back to his team. But the big thing too is that he has slows and Atlas's slows are actually really, really potent. Uh, they they slow the enemy for quite a bit. And the thing about slows in this game is that they don't get DR'd or anything like that. So you're always gonna get the slow for the entire duration. Um, of course, unless they beads or whatever the case. But whenever you slow the enemy, it, it just, especially Bake, it just kind of feels like he can't do anything. So Atlas's slows are gonna be really potent into him, um, as well as of course his displacement with his two, which is why he's gonna be under the counters category. And then finally we have Maui. Maui, Maui has a lot of CC, a lot of decent CC. In most of these matchups, he's gonna be under neutral because I don't think he has too heavy lockdown compared to some of these other characters. But in this case, uh, not only does he have his pull, of course, it's good displacement for Bake, but when Bake tries to dash away, he can easily read that dash with his ult and then catch it with his ult. So uh, that's why I think Maui's here. But yeah, these would be my characters for countering Bake. Again, I don't think he's the best character. You can definitely play him. He's gotten some buffs. He's a lot better than he was, but uh, I, st I still just don't think he's good. <laughs> so next up, we have Cerberus. Um, Cerberus is going to, in my opinion, counter Yemoja and Sylvanas the most, uh, just because Cerberus' passive is really, really nice for healers. He steals 80% of their healing, uh, at least as of them making this video, and he has like 25% anti-heal built in to his passive as well. So he's gonna be really good, especially into like, say someone like Sylvanas, who's gonna be really affected by the slow. Again, Sylvanas doesn't have a dash, neither does Yemoja, not right away at least, but especially Sylvanas, he doesn't have a dash, so the slow into stun is really, really, really gonna screw him over, especially the proc red too. Sylvanas gets procs from his two, Cerberus is going to cancel out all those prots um, and even shred a little bit more as well. So he's going to be very good in Sylvanas as well, still in the healing. Under neutral matchups, no one really too noticeable. Uh, Fafnir and Kubla Karna are all good for canceling out Cerberus's abilities, but I just don't think they have nearly as heavy lockdown onto him as, say, these four down here. 
And so if we go over to counters, of course you have your Aries and your RDO, right? Cerberus relies super heavily off a of dash and crippling out that dash is massive when it comes to locking him down. Aries also is not commuting with his three, so he can easily chain the Cerberus. Cerberus wants to ult him, he could just three the ult and he doesn't even get pulled. So these characters are gonna be really good into him. And then of course Ganesh, because Ganesh just counters like every single frontliner ever. <laughs> like I don't need to keep explaining that one. Alice is a weird one, so I actually put Alice on their counters. You can kind of put this character on the neutrals. Uh, that's completely fine, especially if I have like Kumba up here. You're like, why is Kumba over here, but Alice is down here? The thing I like about Atlas is that he takes Cerberus as slow and immunes it for himself and his allies, and then he can heavily slow Cerberus. And so when Cerberus, say, jumps away when he's slowed, uh, it actually really, really affects him because his jump doesn't go like the longest range compared to other jumps in the game. And so. Yeah, Atlas' slow is really, really heavily going to affect him. And also, too, Atlas can interrupt his two by pulling him out of it as well if he wants to. And, of course, Atlas is also not going to be mutant while he's channeling that two and while he's channeling his dash. So, Cerberus honestly has, like, not as much play into Atlas as he would into a lot of these other characters, which is why I think Atlas goes under the counter serve category. All right, so up next, we have the Rainmaker, the Rain Man Shock. So, uh, just like a lot of soul laners on this list, they're not really going to have they're not really going to counter too many people. So in the green, there's not going to be too much up here. Uh, it's mostly going to be a lot more characters in the red and characters that counter the soul laner I'm talking about. But in Chalk's case, I think out of all the characters, he actually is really good into Sylvanas because Sylvanas has no way of getting out of Chalk's reign like that well, right? Again, immobile character, it's going to be hard for him to get out of Chalk's slow field. So Chalk's going to, you know, 1-3 or just 3 him and all that kind of stuff. And it just makes it hard for Sylvanas to sort of play the game or or micro around, macro around the, the fight. So that's kind of why I have Sylvanas here under like, hey, you kind of get countered by Chalk because it just makes the fight like a little bit harder to play compared to some of these others. Now, the reason, say, for example, like Ares is under neutral um, or like baron's under neutral these characters because Ares does have really good like play into chalk by being able to chain him not really good play but decent play into chalk because he's able to chain chalk and prevent him from you know dashing away and being able to sort of like be more mobile around fights he can also alt chalk from his alt as well not while he's alting but like he can alt at a good time before chalk slams the ground and then pull him back over that's kind of what i mean uh and of course also baron too just has slow immunity right with his two when he gets chalk to above like 50 percent hysteria which is like really really easy to do so like these characters all have sort of sort of some like counterplay to chalk's reign sylvanas not really that much he kind of gets stuck in it he gets stuck in the mud um for characters that counter chalk Ardio and atlas um so atlas because atlas again with the slow thing with cerberus he can kind of slow chalk or he can slow chalk and also make him and his team immune to chalk slow and then Ardio because Ardio can cripple chalk now the reason why Ares is in neutral and Ardeo is under cripple is because Ares still kind of suffers the same thing Sylvana suffers from, and that's kind of sort of getting stuck in the mud, right? Like, it makes it hard for Ares to sort of play the game and move around because he's not as mobile. Ardeo actually has a dash, and she has some other ways to, well, really her dash to be able to get out of Chalks 3. And also she has, like, stuns and slows and all that kind of stuff. So that's kind of why Ardeo is down here, whereas, like, Ares would say, for example, be in neutral, because Ardeo actually has counterplay to chalks slows aries doesn't as much up next we have cthulhu so there's gonna be nobody really in the green section for cthulhu um but for the red section right people that endanger cthulhu you're gonna have of course ganesh uh but you're also gonna have yamir and kabrakin and this is because walls are actually really good against cthulhu whenever cthulhu alts unlike vamana cthulhu can't actually move through the walls vamana can cthulhu can't i don't know why that's a thing i don't even know why vamana can do that but that's a story for another day Cthulhu can't move through walls, and so if Ymir throws up a wall or Kabrakin ults, um, it actually makes it a lot tougher for Cthulhu to play the game and to chase down kills. Um, it's actually a really good separator to separate Cthulhu from your allies, so that's why these two are going to be here. Kumba, Karna, Ares, and Ardeo, because Cthulhu has a dash that he relies on for mobility, and of course these characters, especially Ares and Ardeo, are going to be able to cancel that out or prevent him from using it, and then Kumba, of course, is going to be able to prevent him from using it a little bit too, and he has some other CC as well that really like affects Cthulhu and prevents him from playing the game. Uh, when it comes to neutral matchups, not really too much here that I think um, is like hard going to Cthulhu. Uh, Maybe Fafnir because of his stuns and all that kind of jazz. And like maybe Kepri because you can sort of prevent your allies from dying at all. But for the most part, yeah, like these characters aren't going to have nearly as much lockdown as say like these characters down here would have to Cthulhu. So I would just sort of like mo mostly focus on this. So up next we have Kakolin. Again, not really much in the green. Um, but for the red, your same four characters that I mentioned to earlier, right? Kakolin super relies off his dash. Ares Ardeo. 
uh, Ganesh counters pretty much every, every, almost every single soul laner, and then Kumba's kind of, kind of be in the same category as Ares and Ardio, because Kakolan is trying to dash, and he's just sort of preventing him from using his abilities. Um, some notable matchups in neutrals, I think, are like Ymir and Sobek. Um, Sobek because Sobek can pluck Kakolan, and again, Kakolan has decent recovery, but uh, if you have to use your leap to kind of get back to the same space, it can be kind of a little difficult. Uh, Ymir, just because Ymir has a wall, and actually if Kakolin's in his passive form, I, I would actually put Ymir as a counter, but because of course Kakolin's not always in his passive form, and same thing with Kabraken, but because he's not always in his passive form, that's why I don't have them there. Um, because w when he's in his passive, uh, he has a dash instead of a leap, so he can't actually get through the walls. So um, these characters are still going to be really good into him, like Kabraken and Ymir. But uh, they're not going to have as much like consistent play into him, I think, as these four down here. And of course, like lastly, I think like Fafnir could also be really good into him too, just because you have a lot of stuns. But uh, these four in particular are going to be the main ones that are going to consistently lock him down the hardest. Up next, we have Erlong and Ama. Uh, now, I don't really think they like hard counter any support in particular, but in terms of characters that counter them, so Erlong and Ama, what they want to do right is they are mostly auto attack based characters. Erlong has a bit more CC, I think, than Ama, given that he has a root and his taunt. Ama, well, I guess they have kind of the same amount of CC. I just see Erlong as having a little bit more lockdown because he has two sort of like standstill hard CC abilities, if that makes sense. Whereas Ama has like a, a silence and an alt that slows to a, a stun. But I guess they, they both have a lot of CC, right, in, in that respect. But these two characters in particular are going to be primarily auto attack based, and they're not going to have any leaps to get over walls. And they're also going to rely off dashes to be mobile in fights. So given all this information, of course, Ymir and Kabraken, because they have walls, it's going to prevent these characters from being able to kind of go where they want to in fights. You're going to be able to trap these characters in pretty easily, all that kind of stuff. And of course, you have stuns and, and slows for them. Uh, slows into Ama in particular, I think, are very good because she also relies off a speed boost for her mobility besides her dash. And if you like slow that speed, it's kind of like slowing Pele, right? Like Pele has her three and it gives her a really big speed boost but whenever you slow that um it just really feels like it's really hard for pele to play the game so ama's kind of like the same way you slow ama you make her like way less quick in a fight uh, way less mobile it's really hard for her to play jing because these are primarily auto attack based characters now they do have like for example erlang i think has his like passive dog right that's also hitting so i don't think jing one affects that although i might be wrong about that if you guys do know that like feel free to comment in the comment section um so he has like a little bit more play into jing but for the most part, they're primarily auto attack based characters. Jing is going to have auto attacks in half with his one. So he's actually going to be really good into both these characters. And he, his ult's also pretty good into Erlong and all that kind of stuff. Kumba, because Kumba, of course, has his root cripple, but also too, Kumba's Mez is going to slow attack speed and movement speed as well if the Mez is broken early, right? So um, not only can he lock these characters down, but he's also making it a lot harder for them to sort of like DPS in a fight, given that they're primarily auto attack based characters. Fafnir. Uh, because Fafnir, of course, besides his stuns, has a disarm. Fafnir is very, very good into auto attack based characters. That's pretty much what he was made to counter. His disarm is super, super good into both these characters. It makes it hard for them to play. Ardeo Ares to cripple out the dashes, right? Not much more needs to be said about that. And we already went over Kabrakan and Ymir. So these would be the primary characters, I think, that counter uh, Ama and Erlong. And as for sort of like notable matchups in this case, uh, I, I don't have Ganesh under counters because Ganesh is. So Ganesh counters like most characters in the game, but the thing about Ganesh is like he's a little bit harder into auto attack based characters because he can't silence auto attacks, right? Like your silence is still doing something. You're still like giving prots to you and your allies, so you're making them do like less damage. But it's not like you're going up against the King Arthur and you're canceling out his channeled abilities and that's his main form of DPS. No, these guys mostly auto attack. And so because of that, Ganesh's silence, which is his main lockdown, his main annoyance, why everybody hates him, is going to be like fairly ineffective versus this, which is why he's not under a counter. But yeah, everybody else, I think, is is kind of where they should be. Sobek, I think, is one of the most consistent, most notable matchups that you could probably argue and put into counters. Just because Sobek has a lot of displacement, these characters have to sort of get close to do damage, right? Or to do more damage because they're auto attack based. So they kind of have to be in your face and displacement is actually going to kind of screw them over with that. So Sobek with his tail whip and his one, right? His pluck, um, he's going to make it sort of hard for these characters to DPS a little bit. But yeah, for the most part, I think uh, these two, four, six, seven characters are going to uh, be the best versus Erlong and Ama. Um, next we have Gilgamesh. So Gilgamesh is also primarily an auto attack based character. Uh, just like Erlang and Ama, so he's also going to have, uh, besides the Ares Ardeo, of course, 
he relies off his jump right and he doesn't have a cc mute alt so Aerie's gonna hard counter him but besides these two uh you're still gonna have your jing and your fafnir because again he's primarily auto attack based and that's what he wants to do so these characters are gonna be good into him ganesh is actually good into gilgamesh because even though he's auto attack based he still has a lot of ability play and also his kick is a more channeled ability it's also way more telegraph so it's easier to cancel so ganesh is gonna be able to easily cancel that and sort of like prevent Gilgamesh from doing kind of what he wants to do with some of those abilities. Ganesh is really good at locking down longer animation timed abilities just because the silence is instantaneous and is able to cancel them. Um, now, I don't think Gilgamesh's two actually goes on cooldown when you cancel with silence. Uh, I think it kind of depends where it's on the ability. I think it just gets reset, but it's still really good nonetheless because it kind of messes up his flow, right? Kumba, of course, because we have Aries and Ardeo. Whenever you see Aries and Ardeo, probably just go Kumba, right? You put him here too. But um, also, Kumba is going to have the anti attack speed for the Gilgamesh. I guess, besides all the characters that we had for Ama and Erlong, the two ones I'm going to add in here are Alice and Baron. And that's because Gilgamesh has a lot of slows. Uh, he has slow, I, th I think it's his one, but also his alt, of course. And Alice is going to be really good against that because he can three out of the slow and also Alice is not immune. So he has like a lot of play into Gil Gilgamesh, not just for himself though, but also for his allies. And Baron as well has slow immunity cleanse or he's slow immune and cleanses slows um, if he hits a really nice two onto the Gilgamesh. Also too, what's, what's good about Baron is that Baron's lasers, his one, if they're above a certain amount of hysteria, they will reduce the attack speed of that enemy by 30% and their power by 30% for a little bit. It's a nice little hidden thing in Baron's one that not a lot of people really know as much. Um, you have to read the description of the ability to actually find out, but I think it's people just overlook it and forget it. But yeah, so that's a really, really neat feature to Baron's one. And so that's obviously also going to be good against auto attack based characters like Gilgamesh because you're reducing attack speed just like Kumba would. But then you're also reducing power, which is making them do less damage as well. So he has a little bit of like uh, Kumba in him and also like Jing a little bit too. But yeah, for the most part, these would be my uh, eight characters for, for Gilgamesh. Up next, we have Guan Yu. He, he kind of isn't as traditional as other soul laners. I think he's more like team fight centric. Like he, you kind of want to be with your allies a little bit because you can heal. You can shred frots for both you and your allies. And of course, you also have some good CC, right? Like your slow is pretty potent. It's like 40% if you have your passive fully stacked. And in fights, you're pretty much always going to have your passive fully stacked. High res made sure of that. It's not hard to do. And of course, your alt's going to slow to a stun as well. So uh, Guan actually has a lot of team play, a lot of CC. Um, but in particular, I think he's going to mostly counter, hard counter like one character, and that's just going to be Sylvanas. Again, the slow is going to be really good against him. The three on the proc shred is going to help to negate Sylvanas's two procs that he gets. And of course, uh, the healing is just good to match into Sylvanas's healing as well. Uh, so I think Guan actually has a lot of control in the matchup versus Sylvanas. And you could probably make some other arguments for some of these other characters too, like Yamoja, for example, even Baron too. Um, I know Baron has like a slow immunity cleanse, but you can definitely make some arguments here and there for him. Uh, but I think for the most part, for me at least, in the green, Guan's going to hard counter Sylvanas. Not hard, hard counter, but he's going to have a really good matchup in the Sylvanas, let me say that. In terms of characters that counter Guan Yu in the red, uh, you have Ares, Ardeo, because they cripple Guan, right? Guan needs his dash to be able to be mobile and do stuff. Fun fact, though, about Guan dash, if Guan's already in the middle of dashing, it actually can't be crippled out. Um, and this is in the ability description, so if you guys don't believe me, you can easily read it. But if Guan... So you can, like, chain Guan and prevent him from using his dash, but if Guan's already mid-dash and, say, you try to chain him or throw it on your cripple field while he's mid-dash, um, it actually won't cancel out the dash at all. He's actually cripple immune when it comes to that, which is really interesting. So that's something to keep in mind. But for the most part, these characters are going to prevent him from dashing. And so that's why they're going to counter him. Ganesh is going to be preventing him from using abilities because Guan is ability based, right? You can easily cancel out Guan's like highest damage ability, which is going to be his talent assault. And then Kumba's going to kind of be in this category with like Ares and Ardeo. The thing about Kumba is like Kumba's root isn't, or Kumba's root cripple isn't like nearly as long as say like Ardeo is like six seconds. Ares, if you space them out correctly, I think can go up to eight seconds. So, I, and Kumba is like 1.5 seconds. So, of course, it's not going to be like nearly as long as these two. But he also has like other CC in his kit, right? Like his meds and of course his ult and all that kind of stuff. So, he's just an all-around nuisance right now. And then Kabrakin and Ymir because besides the stuns and all the CC, especially with Kabrakin, you can easily 2-1 the Guan Yu. Um, and then Ymir, of course, you can freeze him and slow him and all that kind of jazz. But besides that, their walls are going to be really good against Guan. Um, I've had some really good walls in the past to prevent Guan from making plays because you can trap him in, of course, trap in his horse. You can prevent an engage from happening with Guan. You can 
um, prevent him from escaping with walls. So walls are going to be really, really good into Guan Yu. So that's why Kabrak and Ymir are going to be here to counter him. In terms of notable matchups, Sobek, of course, because Sobek can pluck Guan Yu, anti-heal. He he's got some slows. Um, Guan is like too immune or knock up immune from Sobek's two, but for the most part, uh, Sobek plucking Guan's pretty good. Uh, also, Yamoja can get a really good ult. By the way, I think it's good to note that the reason why I'm not like hard putting Yamoja um, with like Kabrak and Ymir is because these guys have like sort of more instantaneous walls. Yamoja is a little bit weirder to get off. Um, and also too, Yamoja's is on a much longer cooldown. So for example, like Ymir's is what, like seven seconds, I think late game if your max cooldown, which is absurdly fast, right? Some so around there, don't like quote me on that, but I'm pretty sure it's around seven seconds. And then like Kabrakens, of course, is like, it's an ult, but it's like a 70 second cooldown. Um, and then can easily scale down or it's in that range, right? It's one of the lower cooldown alts in the game, 70, 75, something like that. So for the most part, like these characters are almost always going to have the walls up and their walls are more like instantaneous, especially with like Ymir's. It's like really easy to get up. Yamoja's takes like a little bit more thought to kind of put up and she has to kind of like angle herself a little bit better, I think, to, to throw her wall up. So that's kind of like one thing to note. That's why I kind of have her neutral, not really with these two characters. But if you think that she hard counters Guan, by all means, you can put her down here as well. All right, so next up we have Hades. Hades is a cool one. He's actually going to have a lot of pressure compared to most solaners in lane. Um, and he's going to excel at being able to sort of get in there um, have a lot of CC for people uh, with his alt and his silence, of course, and uh, be, be able to sort of like lock people down while still being super tanky because his alt gives him like 160 prots or something like that. And also like 10% damage mitigation. It's absurd. And of course, he CC me the whole time while he's channeling it. But Hades is going to be really good into characters that don't have dashes because they can't get out of his alt. So because of that, Hades, in my opinion, is going to counter characters like Sylvanas, Kabrak, and Yamoja and Ymir. These characters can get out of Hades alt. Yamoja does have a Riptide. But I've demonstrated this in other videos that even if you can somehow get to the Riptide, which you shouldn't be able to because Hades is pulling you in, but even if you could somehow get to the Riptide, you would fall right back down to the ground because that's just sort of the way the interaction works. In terms of neutrals, just for, for some of these, uh, like Baron, for example, the reason why I don't have him up here is because Baron does have a really good ult to be able to escape from this. And um, another one is like Ares. So actually, let's go over counters and I'll explain why Ares is under neutrals. So Ardio, I think, is going to counter Hades because she has a cripple. Uh, and of course, Hades relies off his dash to be mobile in fights. Um, Ganesh, is, of course, is going to be able to prevent Hades' engage to a certain extent because if Hades dashes in and you two that location, like he can't really get off his abilities right away. It's the same thing why I think Ganesh is going to do Athena. Athena wants to dash and taunt. If she dashes in, Ganesh twos the location which she dashes in at, and she can't really taunt right away, and it allows your team to sort of react to it. Kumba, because Kumba's going to have a nice cripple mez, all that kind of jazz, like Kumba just filled with CC. And then Maui. Uh, the reason why I put Maui here is because Maui, of course, has good amount of cc in his kit his one's pretty good right it's a his one is like a, a vortex it's a pull and it's like a cripple and of course he has his three for stun but the big thing too is if hades tries to dash away it's super telegraphed where he's gonna go and you can just as maui alt that location and kind of bring hades right back to everybody right back to you and your allies so that's kind of why i have maui right here besides the cc i think his ult's really gonna be hades to go over aries Ares does have a cripple like Ardio does so he's actually gonna be pretty good in the hades but it depends how the matchup goes right because Ares also doesn't really have an escape. It's not going to be a fun time into a Hades who's like consistently pulling you in. And it, Hades is all is like a super long channel time too. So it's not like you can just kind of like ult him right away to sort of get out. And if you're towards the center, I don't even know if you can make it all the way out while you're channeling Ares all. But in any case though, yeah, you're going to be able to cripple Hades. So in one aspect, the matchup is fine. But in the other aspect, it's actually going to be kind of hard to play the game. Because if Hades gets a leg up on you, he can easily ult you and just prevent you pretty much make you die in a fight like almost instantaneously because the enemy team's gonna just focus you because you're stuck in a cc so um that's why aries is down here but yeah besides that i think this is where i would sort of place everybody with their respective matchups into hades so next we have hercules and hercules is just kind of like tier right he is really good at displacing people so you can to somebody then like push them back wherever the hell you want to push them to to your team or away from your team whatever the case with hercules is one but he also relies off dashes right so that's kind of like you see the trend you see where what characters we're sort of going to put that he's going to counter what he's going to get countered by um but that's what he excels at so because of all the displacement in the green he's going to counter sylvanas kabraken and baron because these characters don't have immediate escapes if they get displaced very very hard for him to recover and he's going to take advantage of that especially like Kabrakin, for example and sylvanas baron maybe has a little bit of play with his all but all three of these 
um, can be pretty rough into Hercules. It can be really, really, really hard to step up. That's why I kind of have them up here under gets countered by Hercules. Under counters Hercules, relies off a of dash, right? We have Ares Ardio, of course. Um, Ganesh, because Hercules is also ability based. He he actually does have like a lot of damage when it comes to auto attacks. But of course, he is like primarily, I think, ability based too when it comes to his two and his one. And also, too, if he plucks an ally, Ganesh can kind of walk up and silence um, Hercules so he can't sort of finish the combo, right? He can't like pluck, push somebody because Ganesh is preventing that from happening. So, of course, Ganesh is going to be really, really good into Hercules. And Kumbakarna, because we have Ares Ardio here, he's just going to be able to CC Hercules, cripple him out, and all that kind of stuff, cripple root him. And then finally, we also have Sobek. A uh, reason why I put Sobek down here for this one is because besides being able to anti-heal Hercules' heal, which is actually a really big portion of Hercules' kit, um, you, you always hate like fighting into a Hercules and then all of a sudden you just see him get like a thousand HP back and you're like, well, we lost the fight, you know? So Sobek's going to be able to anti-heal him, but of course when Sobek plucks Hercules, it just has like a... I know I said like characters that, and I said this in my support matchups video, characters that have dashes aren't going to as much get countered by Sobek because they can sort of recover from that. But it doesn't feel like the same with Hercules. If you like pluck a Hercules, it really feels like it screws over the Hercules quite a bit, even though it's not technically a lot of lockdown onto the Hercules. Just plucking him out of position really just feels bad for the Hercules. I think it's because his dash doesn't go like as far or isn't as sort of long as other dashes would be. Um, I'm not really exactly sure why it feels like that, but yeah, it feels really, really effective to just pluck three of Hercules, and it kind of feels like you're setting him up for his death sentence. So uh, because of that, yeah, we're going to put Sobek as a counter to Hercules, and in terms of notable matchups or some of the neutrals, uh, you could easily put Yemoja over here with these characters, you know, under the green, but she does have her, her Riptides to sort of be able to get to uh, if she wants to as well, and Ymir also has pretty okay play into him with his wall or actually pretty good play into him with his wall freeze too. now the reason why you know you could say like well dash Kabrakan has a wall and some stunts that's true difference is your mirror's wall is way easier in my opinion to get up you can put it at a much longer distance uh to be able to trap the hercules and you can actually have some really really good play into him with the wall Kabrakan, as i said before the thing about Kabrakan is you have to get close to do stuff even with your wall even with your alt it's going to be further away like a, a bit of a ranged ability but you still have to get relatively close to do stuff with Kabrakan, and especially to displacement characters like hercules he he kind of likes that because he's going to be able to push you right or he's going to be able to like pluck you as you're trying to get to him that kind of stuff ymir can safely sort of put a wall from a good distance away and sort of trap in the hercules and then kind of walk up to him and do what he needs to do with cc so that's why i sort of have ymir here but of course if hercules does pluck Ymir, then it's going to be really hard for Ymir to be able to recover from that. So yeah, these I think are, for the most part, where I would sort of put these characters. So up next we have Jormungandr. Uh, Jorm actually has one of the coolest passives in the game, so if you guys don't know or aren't as familiar with Jorm as much, he can't get displaced. So that means he can't get knocked up, uh, he can't get, in fact I don't even think he can get Al Kuang executed, I'm pretty sure he's immune to Al Kuang executes, but he can't get like uh, knocked backwards or like pushed or anything like that, he can't get displaced. Um, and that's a really, really cool passive to have. So, in my opinion, uh, not because Yorm hard locks down any of these characters, but because he's sort of immune to a lot of what they want to do, Yorm is going to counter Sobek, Maui, Kuzumbo, and Kepri. Sobek, can't, Sobek can still stun him with the pluck, so his pluck still has some play into Yorm. I'm not saying don't ever pluck a Yorm, but you're never going to be able to throw a Yorm backwards or two a Yorm away, right? Like, you're never going to be able to do that. So a lot of, like, Sobek CC is going to be sort of negated because of Yorm's passive. Same thing with Maui. Can't alt the Yorm. You can't one him either. And Kuzumbo, you can't push Yorm around. Kuzumbo's push is, like, one of his main primary abilities. Same thing with his alt, too. You can't, like, knock him around. So you, you see the trend here. Yorm's going to be really immune to these characters. Same thing with Kepri, actually. You can't... You can root the Yorm. So Kepri's actually going to have, I think, out of all four of these characters here, Kepri's going to have some of the most play into him because you can root him. But you you can't pluck him at all. So that's going to be really, really big for Yorm because Kepri's pluck is his main lockdown ability. So that's kind of why I have these four characters up here. Yorm is mostly just immune to, like, a majority of their CC. When it comes to characters that counter Yorm, Ganesh, because Yorm does have some high channel times with his two. Um, now, fun fact, Ganesh's three is a stun into a knockup. You'll obviously be able to sort of stun the Yorm, but you won't be able to knock him up. So Yorm's kind of, Yorm's passive is sort of going to negate like half of Ganesh's CC, um, if that makes sense, on his three. But to be honest with you, there's like a bug in the game where that knockup portion doesn't work half the time anyways, and it hasn't for years. So, um, yeah, <laughs> you know, maybe everybody has that passive, but... Um, 
you're also gonna have Ymir. Ymir's gonna be able to trap Yorm in. Of course, Yorm will have to waste his ult to get out of Ymir wall. And if he doesn't, or it doesn't have it up, then he's just gonna die. And also Ymir's slows are, I think, are really, really good into Yorm. Uh, same thing with sort of like Kabrakin. He's really good at being able to sort of stun the Yorm. Uh, Yorm has a lot of like tick damage. Uh, with his pools and his auto attacks and so kabrakin is going to get his stuns up online really fast his two online really fast and of course kabrakin has a wall to be able to trap the yorm in so fafnir because it's funny yorm is like ability based but he's also auto attack based so fafnir is actually going to negate a lot of yorm's damage by being able to disarm him with his three and of course being able to stun him dragon transform stun him again like fafnir pretty much has like four cc's at any given time to be able to deal with yorm that's why i think fafnir is going to be really good into yorm and of course you have Kumba. you're able to root cripple the yorm i mean the cripple doesn't matter because yorm doesn't have a dash and i guess he does have a dash technically as three um so you're gonna be able to prevent him from doing that but yeah you're gonna be able to root cripple him and of course mez him and um slow him and all that kind of jazz and then lastly we have baron so baron's actually a bit more interesting baron's actually really good into yorm because baron has a root and off his root, off his like ranged root, and the reason why Baron's root is like so good compared to others is because it's ranged, it's more like instantaneous, and it's like a slow to a root. And because it's a slow to a root, it it means it's like more channeled, so it actually doesn't ever get DR'd. Like you're always getting that I think I believe it's like two seconds now, but you're always gonna get that root duration off, which is super nice. Um, or maybe it's like 1.5, something like that. But in any case, you're always gonna get that duration off. But that's why Baron's gonna feel really good into him. Now, of course. Just like as we talked about up here, if you do try to ult the Yorm as Baron, your ult's going to be ineffective versus the Yorm, right? Because Yorm can't get pulled. So do keep that in mind. Yorm kind of completely negates Baron ult. But Baron's combo off his three is just so good against Yorm, especially because we talked about this earlier. But Baron's one also reduces power and auto attack speed to the Yorm. And I forgot exactly what auto attack speed does to Yorm's auto attacks. But I think it like makes his recharge slower or something like that. So it definitely has some sort of effect on him. But yeah, because of that, uh, Baron's like his one, two, three, like his kit overall is actually going to be really, really good into Yorm. And of course, he has slow immunity too for Yorm's pools. But yeah, Baron's kit, I think it's going to be really, really good into Yorm um, besides the alt, barring the alt. So uh, yeah, these are the characters that I think I would put over here. So Mulan's a really cool character. Uh, her three actually can't be crippled out. So her three, I think, is like probably her best ability in her kit, which is her ability to displace somebody by hitting them with her spear, I guess. Like she shoots out her spear, she hits them, which is like a stun, and then she sort of like reels them in, right? She pulls them in. She sort of like meets them halfway. And uh, that's a displacement ability. And what's cool is it can't be crippled out. And so when it comes to, in the green, when it comes to characters that I think will encounters, for the most part, I think it's going to be Ares and Sylvanas. And the reason why is because Ares has a really, really hard time into Mulan because, again, he can't cripple out her three. So she's not really, like, caring nearly as much about his chains. And uh, so she's going to be able to displace him. And, of course, Ares hates being displaced because he doesn't have a dash to be able to sort of recover from that displacement. So she's going to be really good into him. And Sylvanas, of course, we talked about this one earlier, but he also hates displacement, right? Because if he gets displaced, his game is so, so hard because he can't recover. In terms of characters that counter Mulan in the red, uh, Ganesh, because because Ganesh, she has like channel, she has a lot of channel damage, right? Like her one is channeled, her two is channeled, and Ganesh can kind of cancel those like part of the way through, reducing the damage of the overall ability, and also obviously preventing her from um, using those abilities as well. Ymir and Kabrakin, because Mulan hates walls, and Ymir in particular, she, he's actually really, really good into her. Uh, the ability to slow Mulan, because I know we're talking about like no one having an immediate dash, but Mulan's kind of like one of those characters too, right? Like you have to three to a wall to move. Ymir because he's slowing her and he can like throw up walls and stuff like that it's like way more telegraph what mulan wants to do and ymir can easily counter that so ymir is actually going to be one of the best matchups in my opinion into mulan kabrakin is very similar of course has two stuns has a wall so typically if we have ymir here of course we're gonna have kabrakin here kumba karna because he has a root mez and of course an alt he's just op <laughs> when it comes to cc and he's like viable right now so why not baron's actually gonna be really good into Mulan as well because Baron of course can be able to root combo her and again she takes like a little bit to get her three off and then of course his ult's gonna be able to pull her in now she can ult away but if everything's sort of like lined up correctly if she ults away and you move up with your Baron coffin I don't think she can really get out of it um in fact I know she can't get out of it but again, you have to be like in the right position. If she like alts at the edge of your alt, she's going to be able to go get away, right? But if she's like sort of like closer to you and she alts away, you're still going to be able to pull her back in after the alt's completed. Atlas, because Atlas has a nice displacement for her and a lot of slows. Again, she she hates slows. She hates getting slowed. If there's any characters that really, really hate getting slowed, mostly characters that don't have movement abilities, 
um, then Alice is probably going to be really, really good into him. And of course, finally, Sobek, because Mulan hates also getting displaced. Sobek has one of the best displacement abilities in the game, so he's going to be able to pluck Mulan out of position, and it's kind of harder for her to recover. Not as hard as, say, someone like Sylvanas or Ares to recover from getting plucked, because she still does have some sort of movement, but her movement is a bit more channeled. And then in terms of notable matchups, not really much. I mean, just kind of like the Sobek argument from earlier, you could always say, like, Fafnir's, you know, Fafnir's got three sons in his kit. Of course, if you're alting, so you could always kind of put them under here if you want to, but that's why I kind of have these characters here. All right, up next we have Odin and Nike. These characters, unfortunately, if you're solo main, I love playing into these characters when I'm playing support because they're just so easy to just kind of screw over. Uh, they just are. I'm sorry. Uh, they don't really hard counter anybody. You can make an argument saying like Odin counters some of these characters um, that can't get out of his cage, like Kabrakin and all that kind of stuff. Absolutely, you can make that argument. Um, although I just buy Phantom Shell, but again, you can make that argument. Um, and then Yamoja can even get out of Odin Cage, if you guys didn't know. She can actually kind of like place the hoop in between Odin's bars and actually hoop her and her teammates out. So if you do it correctly, you can get out. But yeah, for the most part, um, they're not really going to counter anybody. In terms of characters that counter them, uh, Ganesh, because they're, these characters are super heavily channeled ability characters, right? Nike in particular and Odin, Ganesh is going to hard farm these characters. Very, very good. And Ganesh can also get out of the cage, right? Ganesh is going to be one of your best matchups into into both Odin and Nike. I would definitely pick him. And it's not just like easier for you in these matchups, but like you're making it a lot easier for your allies too. And that's like one of the big things as well. Like you're, it's the difference between your ADC being able to maybe do 20K damage versus 30K damage. Like you're helping them get that extra 10K because you just pick Ganesh into Nike and Odin and like, especially Nike, Nike can't negate a lot of the damage, can't disarm your ADC, all that kind of stuff because you're just sending her up, right? For to die to your ADC, that kind of stuff. So it's like, it makes it a lot easier for your allies. So it's just something to keep that in mind. Something to keep in mind. But uh, Kumba Karna next up because he's got a root cripple, of course, and he has a Mez to be able to cancel like all these abilities. Ardeo and Ares, don't really need to say much to that. They, they rely off jumps heavily. Um, and also too, Odin doesn't even have a CC mute alt. Nike CC mute alt, I think is like a little bit instantaneous too. So it's like, there's a, there's a world in which she mistimes it, right? I've been in that world many, many times. Um, but yeah, Odin, especially like they just rely, they both rely off jumps pretty heavily and, uh, Odin can easily get pulled. And then finally Fafnir, uh, just because Fafnir has a lot of stuns in his kit and he, like these characters have super heavily channeled abilities. Odin's three. Uh, Nike's two, her one, and whenever they get stunned by Fafnir, it just feels it just feels like it's really hard for them to play the game. So these are the four, or sorry, these are the five main characters I think um, that are just gonna be super, super good into these. A notable one is actually Emoja. So a lot of people don't think about this with Emoja, but the thing about Odin and Nike is that they both use shields, especially Nike, right? Like her alt's one really big shield. Emoja's two does a lot of damage to shields. Um, so her two does three times the damage that it would normally do, and it's unmitigated damage, specifically two shields. So pretty much what that means is in a fight, if you two Nike, you're doing like a solid 700 plus damage to her shield. So if you just hit her with one two, you're taking off like probably half or even more than half of her shield. If you hit her with two twos, that's, that's it, like her shield's gone. If you hit Odin with the two, his shield's gone. Sort of keep that in mind. From that knowledge alone, you could probably say like, oh, it sounds like Yamoja kind of counters these characters. You could definitely make that argument. Definitely. Like, I wouldn't say no, but at the same time, she doesn't really have nearly as much heavy lockdown as, say, these characters do, which is why I don't have her down here into them. But I do actually really enjoy playing Yamoja into Odin and Nike because of that reason alone. So sort of like keep that in mind. So up next, we have Osiris and Bologna. And just like our other auto attack based characters, these are also going to be auto attack based. So they're going to get countered by a lot of the same characters. In particular, they don't really counter anybody because they don't have like they have CC in their kits, of course. Like Osiris has a stun. He's got a, like a root as well. But they don't really have too, too much uh, CC, not to the point where you're like really hard locking down enemy support. And so I don't really have anybody in the green. Uh, I don't think they counter anybody in particular. Uh, for counters, Osiris and Bologna in the red, Baron, Jing, Kumba, and Fafnir, all these characters influence their auto attacks to some extent. Baron in particular is really, and I, I mean this, really good into Osiris. Baron is a heavy counter pick into Osiris. Not only are you going to be able to easily root the Osiris, then combo him, and then of course ult him as well. And Osiris literally can't play the game into a Baron. But the other thing too is, we talked about this earlier, Baron's one is 30% attack speed slow and 30% power reduction, 
when they're above a certain amount of stair and you hit them with it. And by the way, he debuffs them for like six or seven seconds, something like that. But he's going to be very, very good into Osiris in particular. But he's also going to be good into Bologna because of that attack speed reduction, all that kind of stuff too. Um, it's just, even if Bologna like dashes out of his root, I, th I still think it kind of like roots her as well um, if she dashes too early. So, because remember, it's a slow tool root. So I don't know the exact full interaction, how it works, but Baron's root's like kind of weird because it'll still root a majority of players even after they dash. Some it won't but others it will. So it kind of just sort of like depends. I think Bologna is one of those characters where it like still roots her even after she dashes out with her one. But yeah, he's going to be very good into both these characters. Jing um, also is because Jing has nice little knock up to a root, but his big thing is his one. So he's going to be able to one these characters and reduce their auto attack damage by quite a bit by 50%. So that's going to be pretty, pretty big. Kumbakarna because he has a you know root to a cripple. Cripple doesn't really matter as much in this case, of course, but the root's going to matter. And of course the Mez, which is going to slow them and slow down their attack speed. That's going to be really effective, especially into Osiris, but into Bologna and Osiris. And then finally, Fafnir, because again, Fafnir pretty much counters like all auto attack characters. So he's going to be really good into them because he can hammer them, so stun them, and he's also going to be able to disarm them. And then if you drag and transform, you kind of get all that stuff back up, right? So um, for the most part, I think these four are going to be really good. Shiva is actually going to be a pretty cool and unique one. So Shiva does rely off dashes. Okay, he's not going to counter anybody in particular, by the way, of course, you can see that here. <laughs> There's nobody up here in the green, but Shiva does rely off dashes a little bit, but he's also sort of CC immune while he's dashing, except to everything except for stuns, right? So um, he's going to actually have some cool counterplay to him a little bit, but uh, for the most part, characters that counter Shiva, of course, Ganesh, right? Ganesh is just going to be good into almost all frontline because she was primarily ability based Ganesh is good into that Ares and Ardeo are going to be really good in the Shiva because and I mean this his three or I think it's his three it's his that his dash is very 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 integral into the flow of his kit I mean you can say that for every character but especially Shiva because of the way it works right he's getting damage immunity uh, or dam sorry not immunity damage mitigation and um he gets a lot of damage while he's dashing and he gets to do it twice so it's going to be really, really integral for him to be able to use his dash in a fight. And Ares and Ardeo, of course, are going to be able to prevent that from happening. Uh, Fafnir, because Fafnir just has stuns. And Shiva, again, is CC immune while he's sort of like in his, like his ohm state, his, in his zen state, right? Um, while he's dashing. But, of course, Fafnir has multiple stuns, so he can easily just get him out of that. It's like kind of like Fafnir into Lance. Like, you you kind of like playing Fafnir into Lance because you can easily just stun Lance off his horse. And then Ymir and Kabrakin because walls are very, very good into Shiva. All right, if, if you wall up a Shiva, he just can't, like, really do anything, even while he's ulting. Like, Shiva's ult is a little bit annoying because, like, dancing around, he's, like, CC immune and all that kind of jazz. But, like, he's CC immune, but he can't move through walls so you can easily just wall off his escape and just sort of like wait for his immunity to be done and then you guys can kill him so and of course these characters also have stuns too to be able to stun shiva out of his dash so for the most part i think these are going to be like the best into him there's not really any like noticeable or notable matchups i think maybe sobek would be a good one but besides that no one that i would really see going under counter shiva uh besides these six that i put down here up next we have wukong so wukong's a pretty fun one um he doesn't counter anybody in particular uh but he has a lot of like he does have some good cc in his kit um he has some good combos where right? you can combo with the wheelix with his bull knock up and all that kind of jazz um but he also has a nice uh alt that allows him to sort of banish himself from the fight for a little bit so that's going to be really really nice but characters that sort of counter wukong in my opinion are going to be ymir and kabraken because besides wukong's alt um he can't get out of these characters walls right and that's going to be really really big uh, no matter what form he goes into, even if he's in bird form, it might look like it, but it's just an illusion, guys. Trust me. He he can't bird form fly over the wall. <laughs> I tried when I first started playing Smite. It didn't work out that way. So the wall is going to be really good for trapping him in. Ganesh, because Wukong is primarily ability-based. If you're a ability-based character, Ganesh is just going to farm you if you try to get like somewhere close. Uh, Kumba Karna, because Kumba can root cripple. Uh, Wukong out of his dash. He's also knock up immune too while he's channeling the two, which is actually really good. So if Wukong tries to bull form out of there uh, and you channel the two, you can easily just catch his dash because you're not going to get CC'd. And then of course, Ares and Ardeo because Wukong has mobility, relies off his three, especially for his main part of his CC. Of course, he can slow in his two, but uh, his CC all comes from his three, whether it's the Tiger Stun or the Bull Knockup. So these characters are going to be able to prevent him from getting away by crippling him out. Up next, we have Surtur. Surprise, surprise, doesn't counter anybody. Uh, Surtur is going to be an ability-based character, 
that actually has some nice little bursts from his auto attack because of his ability procs. But he's going to be an ability based character that doesn't really have mobility. So let's kind of keep that in mind as we go over these people in the red. We'll go over Fafnir in a second, but Ymir and Kabrakin, because they have a lot of CC to be able to lock him down, they both have stuns. Ymir in particular has slows. That's going to be really good in the Surter. Uh, but they also, of course, have walls, and Surter can't get well out of a wall unless he ults, right? So it's going to be really, really hard for him to play against these characters in a fight. Ganesh, of course, because Surter's a, a bit ability based. Now, Ganesh is actually an interesting one because Surter's like channeled abilities still go through even if they, even if he gets silenced. So this is more about ability prevention rather than ability cancelization. But for the most part, I think Ganesh is still going to be a good counter into Surter. Now, there's a good argument to be made that's like, eh, I don't know if he like hard counter Surter like you would other characters. Um, if this was like a tier list, Surtur wouldn't be at the top when it comes to Ganesh being like when it comes to Ganesh countering him. So you could definitely put him under neutral. That's completely fine. But uh, I still think Ganesh is very good into him. Again, he's going to be good into like 90% of frontline, right? And then Kumba because Kumba has a root cripple. Cripple doesn't really matter in this case because Surtur doesn't have an escape. Um, but he does have a root. He has a mez. He's going to be able to slow after the mez breaks as well. So he's going to be actually really good in the Surtur. Sobek, because Surtur doesn't want to get displaced, again, doesn't have any mobility, so Sobek plucks him. Good rule of thumb is, if they don't have any mobility, Sobek's going to counter them, right? So because Surtur has no mobility, no dash, no no leap, no nothing, no jump, um, Sobek's going to be able to displace him and then sort of counter him. And then Atlas as well, because Atlas has a lot of slows in his kit, so Surtur hates slows, he hates being slowed, and of course, Atlas does have a displacement with his two. Um, and so the CC lockdown from Atlas's slows plus his two is actually going to be really nice into Surtur. And then also Baron. Baron's going to be one of your like prime, I think, counters to Surtur. Kind of like with the Osiris, right? You root the Surtur, you 2-1 him, and it's just like really, really hard for Surtur to play the game. And then, of course, you have your ult. Like Surtur has to ult out after that. And then by the time Surtur lands, you're probably going to have your kit back up as Baron too, right? But he has to ult down. If he doesn't have ult, Surtur's just kind of screwed. So Baron's going to be one of your like really, really, really good in matchups in the Surtur. If you ever fight against Surtur and you're playing support, Baron might be like a play. But just kind of keep in mind, if you are playing Baron support, um, he does get countered by like a lot of other characters too. So just kind of keep that in mind. It's got to be like a good draft form. And then we'll kind of circle back to the Fafnir. Now Fafnir does have um, just multiple stuns to be able to screw over Surtur, right? For the most part, yeah, um, these are going to be characters that I think sort of counter Surtur. And then so last but not least, we have Vamana. Vamana is... <laughs> Man, I, I've talked about Vamana so much. This character I hate so much. So Vamana specializes, well, he's ability based, but he's also auto attack based. But the thing about him being auto attack based is that, well, while he's ulting, um, he can't be CC'd at all. <laughs> and well, hey, can I wall him dash? Nope, because he can walk through walls, unlike Cthulhu can. So Ymir Kabrakin are going to be off the table. Can't really counter Vamana with Ymir Kabrakin. But uh, in terms of characters that Vamana counters, He's just going to be able to run down people. So Sylvanas doesn't have an escape. I feel bad for Sylvanas because in a lot of these matchups, I feel like Sylvanas is like that one character that's like, hey, if somebody does get countered by a soul laner, it's going to be Sylvanas, right? Um, but he he does just sort of get ran down by Vamana, especially in his ult. If Vamana's going like a Kin's shredding build, like Kin's like Xe, that kind of stuff. I don't know what people are building on Vamana, but he does have some wicked builds here and there. Um, you can easily just kill a Sylvanas while you're ulting, and there's not much Sylvanas can do. Can't CC you, you're CC immune, can't get away from you, he's faster than you, and you can't get away from him because you don't have an escape, so you're, you're kind of just like toast, right? You're a sitting tree, essentially. But there are going to be a couple characters, I think, that have pretty good counterplay into Vamana. And it's funny because these are like a lot different, well, except for the Baron, but for the most part, these are a lot different than any other soul laner that we see. These characters are characters that specialize in debuffing, okay, or buffing. But Vamana, again, when I'm looking at Vamana, he can move through walls while he's ulting, and he's CC immune. So you can't really lock him down. But you can debuff him. You can make his auto attack speed less. You can make his power less or his damage less. And that's where these characters are going to come in. Baron, because, again, Baron's one, right? If he's above a certain amount of hysteria, Baron combos him. Um, Baron's one is going to reduce his attack speed and reduce his power by 30% for like a, a ton of time. And that's going to be really good because that's going to significantly uh, limit Vamana's damage. Not obviously completely negate it, but significantly limit his damage while he's in his alt form. Jing is the same exact way as Baron in this case. Jing, it, well, what's nice is Vamana, of course, can only auto attack while he's alting. Um, and Jing reduces auto attack damage by 50%. So you're going to have a really, really nice debuff onto Vamana. Now, if you do one, the Vamana, it's going to extend his all time. 
that's the one thing to look out for. And so you kind of have to like play around with that. Some of your teammates might hate you for doing that, but I think it's actually really good because I've said this in the past. So whether it's five seconds or nine seconds, Vamana is still going to kill your carry in a five second duration. Of course, you, you'd rather him get out of vault after five seconds, but like he's still going to do a lot of stuff in five seconds. And if you're just not hitting him at all, it just allows for him and his team to get a lot of pressure in a fight. In my opinion, I, I personally think it's best to just, especially if you have six item carries late game, it's best to just try to kill him. And if he's sticking onto your carry and you won the Vamana, because you're reducing his damage by 50%, it's going to take every two auto attacks to make up for one auto attack, right? And that's going to be really, really good for your allies in terms of being able to out DPS and kill him. Also too, think about it like this, he has lifesteal built in while he's ulting, right? Like he gets lifesteal. If you're reducing his damage, that means his healing from lifesteal is going to be less, okay? So I think like all in all, um, so you're going to re be reducing his healing essentially. So I think all in all, I think it's really, really good to want him as Jing, as long as you and your allies are on the same page about it and they're not trying to run away from him and actually instead trying to DPS him. But Baron Jing pretty much going to do the same exact thing. Um, they're just going to reduce his auto attack damage by a lot. Baron's also going to reduce his attack speed a little bit, but Jing is going to reduce his auto attack damage by the utmost by 50%, which is absolutely insane. On the flip side to these two. Kepri is not debuffing Vamana, he's buffing his allies. So Vamana is going onto your ally, try to hit a two onto your ally, you're going to reduce the damage they take by 30%. In the case that you're not trying to DPS Vamana, try not to hit Vamana with your two, because of course it's going to do tick damage and extend the duration of his ult. But uh, again, I think that especially if you're Kepri and you have ult up, because you can just ult your ally too, right? It's really going to heavily screw over Vamana because he has a limited amount of time in his ult and he wants to do as much damage as he possibly can in that time. But like if you to your ally and even to the Vamana reduces physical prots by 25% because that's what Kepri does, like your allies should just be sticking to him and try to kill him. Again, you're Kepri, so like you're reducing the damage they take, you're increasing the damage that Vamana is taking by shredding his prots, and you also have alt if things kind of completely go south. Um, so I think these three characters in particular are going to be very, very good into him relative to everybody else nobody else in my opinion really does much into him again he walks through walls so they can't really do like too much into him uh ymir's passive maybe can do a little bit because ymir does reduce the damage that people do now by 50 percent but yeah for the most part like these guys aren't really going to do, do too much into him so i think these are the main characters that kind of ramana also too uh baron's uh two giving like a speed boost if he hits Vamana with it is really nice for you and your allies to sort of like get away if that's the route you choose some notable matchups that also help to do that are atlas one in particular is actually gonna be maui though too maui is um i've actually sort of used maui as a nice little prevention tactic to help against Vamana. i remember i was even tuning venedu and ven was even saying like wow maui's actually pretty good into Vamana because you can just to your ally away from the Vamana, right? You can kind of get him away from Vamana. And so that's where sort of like the, the Maori thing pops in. You can do the same thing with Atlas. You can do the same thing with Yamoja as well. Like speed boost your allies away with Atlas, hoop your allies away with Yamoja. So you can kind of like uh, say these characters might have like really good counterplay to Vamana, but this is more of a like running away prevention tactic. And these three down here are more of like a stand your ground, kill this guy while he's ulting, don't let him bully you kind of tactic. Um, so that's kind of the way I would look at it. But yeah, so these are sort of the characters I would do for Fumana. But guys, that's going to be the video. That's going to be all the support and soul laner matchups um, that I have. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys learned a lot as well. Um, I know some of this stuff can kind of get repetitive. So I tried to sort of like inverse this instead of doing like supports only uh, on the left side here towards their soul laner matchups. I kind of did soul laners instead to talk about the soul laners a little bit more. But yeah, that's going to be the video. I hope you all enjoyed. And if you guys have any like comments or questions or anything like that about the matchups, um, feel free to comment down below and I'll do my best to answer them. Again, it's less about the categorization of these characters and more about like just the upfront knowledge, right? Like learning how these matchups work out, how they play out, understanding abilities and kind of what counters those abilities. And then you guys can make your own decisions on where you would like to put some characters when it comes to counters, um, if they're countered or if they're under a neutral category. So again, I hope you guys enjoy this video and until the next one, see ya.